have nothing to do with Putin. I've never spoken to him. I didn't have not have communications with the Russians. I had no meetings, no meetings. I, I might have said hello to a few people. I did not collude with Russia, nor do I know of anyone else in the campaign who did so. Given all of the denials that we heard, some of them quite vociferous during the campaign and even just after, that there was any association with Russians, we are now, compared to those very strong denials, astounded by the number and the types of contacts that occurred, and even in some cases by the high level of contacts that occurred. They came to the periphery of the campaign. People like George Papadopoulos, the man who pled guilty to the FBI for lying about those contacts. They came to the president's son, Donald Trump Jr. They came to the campaign chairman. They came to a low-level foreign policy advisor named Carter Page. What we don't yet understand, uh, and is a sort of major question for the country going forward, is what does all that mean? As the Russian influence or attempts to intercede, interfere with the campaign became more evident, Donald Trump and members of his campaign rejected the notion that they were getting help from Russians. There was some discussion of whether Russians might be involved in the hacking, and Donald Trump at one point famously suggested... It could be Russia, but it could also be China. It could also be lots of other people. It also could be somebody sitting on their bed that weighs 400 pounds, okay? He rejected some of the reports of Russian interference as fake news, repeatedly using that now famous phrase. Russia is fake news. But since then, there have been a series of things that have come out. In the range of contacts that we've examined, there are really three ones that at the moment kind of stand out as being particularly notable for the people involved, for their sort of the breadth and length of the contact. The most famous in the, in the press that spilled out this uh, past summer was the meeting that occurred in June of 2016 in Trump Tower, hosted by Donald Trump Jr. He was invited to meet with a Russian lawyer. Donald Trump Jr. accepted that meeting after he was told he was going to receive dirt about Hillary Clinton that was part of a Russian government effort to help his father's campaign, and he famously responded, Love it. When you read the parts about the Russian government or Russia supporting your father, did that put off any sirens in your head? Honestly, I don't know. I mean, I think this was, again, just basic information that was going to be possibly there. Everyone now says that wasn't a government effort, and in fact, he was not given dirt. But that's what he was told about the meeting, and he accepted the meeting. Uh, so that's one of the three. The second one has to do with uh, George Papadopoulos, uh, the man who's been in the news this week. Special counsel Robert Mueller revealed that a low-level, seemingly low-level volunteer on the Trump uh, Foreign Policy Advisory Committee had in fact been repeatedly suggesting to high-level members of the Trump Organization meetings in Moscow, meetings even with Vladimir Putin, between Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin. We are told that they're all rejected by the campaign, but we are waiting to hear more from Robert Mueller's office about what he has learned about those. The final one uh, comes not in the campaign world, but in Trump's business world, where one of his closest confidants, a lawyer for the campaign named Michael Cohen, had a number of communications about the possibility of building a Trump Tower in Moscow. These are ongoing through the campaign. There are two different sets of Russians who come forward to Cohen to propose building a Trump Tower in Moscow during the campaign months. And at one point, Cohen actually contemplates briefly, but does not ultimately go through with it, a plan to actually go to Russia to go to an economic forum where he might meet Russian officials as part of these efforts to get this tower deal off the ground. There's a wide range of Russian actors who we hadn't run into and hadn't focused on previously, but who now show up in a sort of constellation of contacts with the Trump campaign representing Russia and apparently Russian interests.